everybody, or good afternoon, good evening, good middle of the night, depending on where you're joining us from. I want to welcome you to this latest edition of our paid search marketing webinar series with Mr. Brad Geddes, Time Management Techniques for PPC Pros. I know this is one of Brad's absolute favorite topics. He is a time management uh, fanatic, so uh, we're going to get some good stuff. Managing paid campaigns takes a lot of hats and a lot of hands and a lot of hours, and it's easy to miss details that might have big impacts on the results of your campaign. So that's why Brad's here, is he wants to help you make the most of your time and resources with better time management tips and tools. You will never have to miss another important update, deadline, or opportunity if we follow through with the things that uh, Brad is going to give us. If you don't know Brad, let's fix that right now. Brad Geddes is the author of Advanced Google AdWords and the co-founder of Adalysis, a PPC, I hope I say that right, Adalysis, a PPC ad testing and management platform. He is keynoted or spoken at more than 85 conferences around the globe and is one of only two Google-approved AdWords seminar leaders. He's also conducted more than 70 officially Google-supported AdWords seminars for success. Before we get started, though, I just want everybody to uh, understand what to expect and know uh, a little bit about how to use your dashboard and how to interact with us. So take a look at your dashboard and you will see a questions field. Uh, I'm, I can't remember exactly how it's labeled for you in your version of the dashboard, but uh, that's where you can type a question or a comment. I see a couple of people actually have already said hello. Go ahead and use that uh, field for me really quick. Just say hello to uh, Brad. Let him know that you're looking forward to hearing what he's got to say. Tell me where you're joining us from. It's always fun to know where people are uh, coming from. I personally am sitting uh, uh, in uh, the south, sort of South San Francisco, Silicon Valley area right near the coast. We've got somebody here from Colorado Springs. Andrew is here from Colorado Springs. Audra is here from D.C. I suspect it's chilly there right now. Sunny Orlando, says Nathan. Uh, Columbia, oh, M-O. Okay, Missouri. I always get that one. I, I feel like it wants to be Montana, but I think M-O is Missouri. Uh, Portland, Maine, says Dan. Uh, all right, fantastic. So people I can hear me, that's great, and you know where the questions module is. The question module will be your best friend because during the webinar. If you have any questions about the things that Brad's talking about and you want a little further clarification uh, or you need some a little additional information, just go ahead and drop your question into this questions module. We will queue them all up and at the end of the uh, presentation we will then loop back around and do a proper Q&A and address as many of your inquiries as we can. If you want to share on social, if you want to live tweet what you're learning, Brad says something super awesome and you want to go ahead and share it with your friends on the fly, feel free to do so. Uh, if you want to, use the hashtag MMWebinars and uh, that way everybody will be all jealous that they're not here and maybe they'll join us next time. One last, Megan says hello from Buffalo, New York. Go Bills! All right. So with that said, that's all you want to hear from me. Return your seats and your tray tables to a full and upright position, please. Observe the no smoking sign, no flash photography, and I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Brad Geddes. How are you, sir? Hey, thank you, Chip. And, and I'm in D.C., a little chilly, but I'm look, we're looking into the woods, six deer at the moment, which oh, I will nice. show exactly where I see it in a moment. So this is one of my favorite topics, and I'm going to get into why in just a moment. So, you know, from an official agenda standpoint, we're going to talk a little about tools, time management, project management, collaboration, which is probably not talked about quite enough in paid search, automation, right? So we have a lot of, lot of things going on here. And then, of course, a quick recap. So, you know, it Chip introduced me, and this is why I'm a time management person, right? And when you look at what I do every week, uh, I am the, you know, faculty for First Simply We Learn at PPC, the co-founder of AdAlysis, I'm founder of CK, I'm a PPC consultant, I'm an SMX workshop leader, I write about six to eight articles a month, I wrote a book, I'm on the board of two companies, and more. So to manage to get that done and not have everyone think you're really lazy and not replying to them, you have to be a time management crazy person. Right? So look, every PPCer, I'm a little bit of a control freak, and if you're in PPC, you probably are too. Right? I love math. Ad writing it comes from writing all the time, right? And, and this is why this is important when you think about running your agency, you're running your in-house teams, and how you manage to get everything. 
So this is really question one. Now, I, I asked about 150 people this one day at a conference, there was a clear answer. So what day would you start building an account? If someone said, hey, we have a new client onboarding, and you look at your calendar, you say, okay, Monday, there's no big time blocks. Tuesday, well, I've got the afternoon free, but we have an offsite. There's no way I'm coming back and working because no one ever does. Oh, Thursday. So you've already pushed you know, this new client onboarding four days before you ever start. Now, here's the real secret of this calendar, right? The actual committed and working time is identical every day. But in paid search, right, we're known as our makers, people who actually need to create stuff. Now, makers live in big blocks of time, right? This is a calendar of what you usually call your manager someone who lives by their calendar because they live by 25 an hour long you know, minute meetings. And, and so this is what we're going to talk about is how to really manage your schedule and time properly. Because when we look, look at tools, right, there are many, many paid search tools out there. It, it's not a lack of tools that's a problem in paid search. If you need to get something done, there's probably a tool out there that will help you out. The problem is, right, it's not about like what tool to use. It's about knowing when to use them. Right? This is a very important point we're going to circle back to. Right? So your calendar, your project management system tells you when you have time and what needs to get done. Right? A tool is only a job as something to help you when you have time to actually use it. And so when you look about work, and there's the three important facts to kind of think of. The average person in an office environment spends a minute and 15 seconds before being interrupted. Now, we've already been talking longer than that so far. So thank you, Chip, for not interrupting me an hour and a minute and 15 seconds in here. Now, it, it takes an average of 25 minutes to fully concentrate on what you want to get done. Those two numbers don't work well together. And multitasking, no, it's a terrible, terrible idea. If you have an IQ of 120, so you know, slightly into the above average range, and you're multitasking, your IQ is 105, which is basically right at the median. Right? You, you lost that, that ability you have. And so multitasking isn't useful either. And usually when you look at how long it takes to get involved in something and how often we get interrupted, Multitasking happens, and then none of the work gets done as well as it should. So when you look at how productive people are during the daytime, right? and you can, you can actually use this URL and look at this chart for yourself, but so, so in the mornings, okay, it's 6 in the morning, everyone's drinking coffee, no one's actually awake yet, got that. Then you've got that time block, right, from like 7 to, to about 10, 11 o'clock for some people, that they're really productive. Oh, lunchtime happens. What happens when it gets near lunchtime? Right, your stomach starts growling, you're looking at the clock like, all right, what do I want to go for lunch? Then, then you eat, you get that, that, that time back. In the afternoon, we have this, this problem, right? You want to get work done, right? You're motivated to get work done. But it's afternoon, you're now at your seventh, eighth hour being in the office, and you don't have the energy and the focus to get the work done. That's why afternoons are such a crazy time for people because they want to get it done, they don't have the motivation to get it done, and they often feel in the afternoons, what am I actually doing? Right? Have you ever sat there at the computer looking at like some spreadsheet for 15 minutes like, I think I wrote a formula, where did it go? And then highest motivation of the day, going home. The highest motivation everyone has in the day, right, is actually, oh, the commute back home. So, so when you think about structuring, and this is actually my day, right, I, I get up about 5.30 in the morning. Today it was 4.25, it's normally not quite that early. No, no alarm, have some coffee, and, and I read, you know, check the news, see what's going on. All right, then I'll check email to see did something burn down. Basically, if something didn't burn down, I put email aside. Then, this is our sort of company mantra. And it doesn't have to be at 7. If you come in the office at 8, 
it's fine. Make it at eight or nine. Right? Every day, someone gets something done. Email is not an answer. The morning is our highest productivity of the day. It's our highest focus of the day. It's our highest energy of the day. The morning we get something done because we bring our own energy right to the task to make it happen. And so every day everyone in our company can say, hey, yeah, I did this today. Now, all right, lunch. Lunch time is, for me, it's usually Netflix plus lunch. Do not eat at your desk. Take a break. Let the work simmer. Let it let, that's like where you have the shower moments, right, where you're taking a shower, like, that's the answer, right? Let your brain relax at lunchtime. Now, afternoons, you have the motivation to do something, may not have the energy to do it. So this is a great time to borrow energy from somebody else, right? So this is a great time for client meetings, because you know what? They have the motivation to understand their reports. Right, that, that's it's higher from that moment in time. So that way you're buying their energy, but you still have the, the, the motivation to actually want to do a good job. Right? And so it's a great time in the afternoon to do those calls, those meetings, webinars. Why do you think market -led webinars start at twelve thirty for me? I know it's early in the morning for chip. And then by three, I'm done. Now, this is not always true. Right? There are times that Hey, we do a lot with you know Australia. We do a lot in Asia. So every once in a while, sure, right? I manage just like four days a week. I manage it, not five, but that makes a huge difference because hey, by sometimes by three, I'm done. Sometimes it's a little bit later, but that's that's that breaking up of the schedule right into your calendar, right? So block off that morning time to get stuff done and then use it at afternoon for other things. Now again, every day you can't do this. If I'm East Coast, I'm in the East Coast US, so in my morning, they're still actually still in the office in London. So we can actually do phone calls in the morning. So yeah, once a week, it messes that up. So you know, first step is your calendar. Second is your office. Now again, I have a nice office and we'll have cubicles, whatever it is, right? But what's, what's important is A, I didn't have to clean this desk to take this screenshot. This is actually what my desk looks like right now, except there's also a presenter on it because I'm holding it as I'm doing this right now. But it's one monitor. And, and you know, two is useful if the second one holds reference data. But I can't count the number of times I walk into an office, everyone's got dual monitors, looks really good, and the second monitor is that email that's popping up and keeps their attention, or worse, it's Facebook or Twitter, even more distracting at that point in time. Right? I've got a huge library. I use three books these days. Kindles are awesome. You know what? There are certain things an actual book is better for, and it's usually ad writing because a book, that paper, it, it, it helps the creative spirit, and so if you're doing a lot of ad writing, you know what, actually flipping through a dictionary is way easier than going to dictionary.com. Way simpler, and it's actually quicker to jump between pages and see stuff. So when you think about it, right, it, it is where is your focus? If your focus point is cluttered, I'm sure you hear this all the time, right, you get distracted. If it includes multiple monitors that, you know, have a Twitter feed or email going, you lose focus. In fact, everyone in our company uses the same desktop. A, first thing to note, there's not a single icon on the desktop. Because if they're on the desktop, they don't fall into things like Dropbox, or Google Drive, to be shared and backed up automatically. They actually slow your computer down. Having too many icons on your desktop, because your computer keeps your desktop icons in memory, can actually slow your computer. Clean desktops are actually really, really useful. Second, hey, there's a reminder of how we manage things, right? Okay, is this actionable? No, maybe it needs to be in a reference. Is it a, a long thing that just needs to go into a task management system? Great. Um, is it something that's going to be just real fast? So that way you look at your email, you got 20 emails, 10 take all of a 30 seconds each to reply, boom, five minutes, half of them are gone. Your email is less now, and the others need to be in project management or on the calendar or you know, a, a reply to it. Now, 
Multi-screens can be useful if your second screen is your project management or like a note-based system. So that's where all the time I may have a split screen of here's AdWords, here's Excel, right? Or here's Excel and here's LiveWriter for writing blog posts. So reference data can be useful on a screen, but what you don't want are two completely different things sitting there that just cause you to distract yourself back and forth all the time. So paid search, there's way too much news. As I'm sure all of you know, there's just too many announcements that come out. So this is, I love Feedly, but you need some kind of a, a reader system, right? I find that email news is distracting because why do I want that coming in my inbox? And if I make a rule to shove it into another folder, the odds of me checking my news folder, I do have one, but it's, it's pretty low, right? So the way even my, my Feedly is structured, this is like a Google reader if you don't know it. Right, I've got, I like my tech news, so that's why 1A tech is kind of like, this is the stuff to read in the morning when your brain's still turning on. Then, right, I've got my one mark read. These are things like ad age or stuff that they write a lot, and if I don't get to it, it doesn't matter, right? They're kind of bored moments. And then, hey, here is the recaps of the things you should actually know. And, and Marketing Day and Search Cat, both from uh, Third Row Media, fantastic for this. And then you can get into the other things, whether it's all the PPC stuff or your alerts or, or whatnot. Um, if you don't, well, a lot of places don't have uh, uh, RSS feeds anymore, it's really annoying. There are things like email to RSS that will take your that email, automatically make an RSS feed for it, so that way you can even read your email in a feed reader to sort of keep that out of your inbox. Because here's my email system. It's, I mean, I love Google Inbox. I, I find Inbox is actually really, really useful. It is rare for me to have more than 10 emails in my inbox at any one time. And at the end of the day, it's not always Inbox Zero. I, I think that's a concept that just says, hey, archive all your email or don't get back to people. So yeah, there's usually three to five emails, you know, something sitting in my inbox. But machine learning, right, the, 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 a lot of AI that people are talking about these days, it's actually really useful for quick replies to email, right? You can just say, hey, done, what do you think? And it learns, so that way you can say, oh, you usually say this to share, you usually say this to John, so here you go, this is what you normally say if you do like a one word reply. And so even emails can start to be automated in, in some cases. Now, our craziness doesn't stop there. We, I'm not gonna go through these, but we even have meeting rules. Um, I, I, years ago, I went on vacation, I actually went on my honeymoon for a couple weeks, and I came back to more than 30,000 new emails and went, huh, that's never gonna happen. And then I went, how do I have this many emails? And I took a look at, at you know, the list we had in the company, our company was only um, 142, 143 people at the time. So there's no way they should be able to generate that many emails. I'm like, I'm on 176 distribution lists. Maybe that's just too many distribution lists to be on. And, and sat down and said, hey, let's make some meeting rules. Things like meetings can only be 25 minutes or 50 so people can actually make their meeting on time and, and go to the bathroom. When meetings start, we actually lock the door, or if it's virtual, we don't let people join, because meetings should be something people want to attend. I know that sounds so counterintuitive, right? Like, you should want to, because you're shaping direction of something. And, and we go so far as to say, if you call a meeting, you must have an agenda. Everyone must have the agenda in advance. The outcome of the meeting can't be, we need another meeting to discuss this meeting. It must be, this is what each person needs to actually do. And if you don't accomplish those, a few more sets of rules, you actually lose meeting privileges for a week, right? So the first week I did this, I locked our CEO out of, the, out of our actual meeting room. He was never late again. He yelled at me for once, I explained, the, I explained why, and he never, he's never late again. And, and I'm sure most of you know, hey, your CEO, if they show up, 20 minutes late, you let them in, and they, you, all, you spend the next 20 minutes rehashing the first 20 minutes, 
wasting everybody's time. And, and so circling back to tools, right? Tools help us get things done, right? That's, that's what's important about them. So we did a survey uh, seven, six years ago now. How many PPC tools do you use? And, and you know, it varied, but of course it's a linear progression based on how many keywords you have under management. Did it again about a year and a half ago and, and said, you know, what's the number? And there was significant growth at certain levels. And went, huh, well, I, do you really need this many tools to manage a paid search account? Like the numbers just seem too high. Like who really needs 11 different tools? Now the thing is, the, the new tools were not like people were using Marin and Kenshu and Acquisio. The tools people now listed as being paid search tools were things like Dropbox, Google Drive, um, Trello, or Teamwork PM, collaboration-based tools. Slack was considered a paid search tool. And, and so the difference is not the tool growth by how many tools you need to manage an account. It's that teams are becoming more efficient in sharing information because that saves huge amounts of time. If you're an in-house company or you're an agency and multiple people deal with an account, how often have you had to wait where you say, hey, can I have the 250 by 250 blue image banner for this new account? And okay, so they sent it to you know, analyst A who's on vacation, so I have to email the company again, right? And that's just a waste of time. So using, you know, Box, Google Drive, Dropbox, pick your favorite, right? They're, they're all good. They're a little bit different, but they're all good. And, and you know, just as important are consistent naming conventions. We, we've talked a lot in the past about how, you know, account structure is important and the labeling your campaigns well is useful. That way you can say, oh, this is the remarketing campaign only for Los Angeles or this is the DSA campaign with audiences for the United States, right? You can glance at the campaign name and know what it is. The amount of times I see some of the shared, you know, they have a shared uh, asset system and it's called image one, image two, image 327. Instead of blue theme 250 by 250 uh, download call to action. All right, now you can easily sort them, find exactly what you look for. Same for reports, right? If you go on vacation and another analyst has to step in and find your you know, report from July of 2017, that hasn't happened yet, July of 2016, then they could easily see if there's good naming conventions. So it's not just the collaboration of the information. It's actually having good naming conventions so anybody can glance at it. And, and find that information. In fact, we often, I often write a, a, just a text document at the top level of shared saying, this is the naming conventions for these files. Someone could pop it up and go, oh, boom, boom, boom. Okay, I know how to find everything now. Same with, you know, when you think a uh, project management, you know, Trello, Jira, Basecamp, Podio, Swido, Teamwork, PM, right? They're all good systems. There's no best project management. That, that doesn't exist. There's project management your team will actually use because it helps them feel like it's getting their job done. Now that's important. Some systems make people feel that they're just entering data over and over again for no good purpose. That will be abandoned, that's not going to be embraced, and this is a personal thing or a corporate thing. So like the old base camp, I loved. The new base camp, I can't stand it. I come across people all the time like, yeah, we love the new base camp. It's amazing, right? Neither one of us are right or wrong. It's just a different way that we want to see information given to us and illustrated. Same for note systems, right? Evernote, Google Keep, Microsoft OneNote, Google Docs, they all have the ability to, you know, take quick notes, share notes, everything. So which one is sort of best? If you're an Office 365 company, you're probably using OneNote. If you're a Google Docs company, you're probably using Google Keep or Google Docs. So it's really more about which one does the team want to embrace over, hey, let's go find the new, coolest, shiniest thing today. Now, if you're a solo practitioner, right, calendars are great. This is what you actually need to get done, right? If you're 
the NA team environment, then project management's better. There's nothing wrong with a calendar, right? Because that way you can just say, oh, okay, Tuesday is negative keyword day, and Wednesday is bid day, whatever they happen to be. So we think about it. Tools help you get things done, right? You don't have to have a tool, right? Tools are optional. Tools are there to accomplish a task. But if you don't know what the task is, your tools are useless, right? That's a very important thing. I see people all the time go, what tools do we need? I'm like, well, what are you trying to do? And they look at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, no, like, what are you trying to do, right? If you're trying to do competitive research, then you probably want to look at SpyFu and SEMrush. If you're doing keyword research and you want volume data, then you, the Google Keyword Tool is way better than SEMrush for absolute volume and budget projection. They'll both give you keywords, they'll both give you budget projection, and useful in very, very different ways. So it's useful to start with like the big picture, right? Your project management, your calendars, what do you do? And we've done a, a workshop on this in the past, I'm going to show it in a moment. I'm just going to walk through this in about three slides, and if you're really interested, then you can see our entire workshop video on this in the past. Right, so what do you actually do? And this is a set of questions which really, really tell you how to organize your PM system or your calendar-based system. If you do this in five minutes, you did not think about this exercise. So number one, make a list, right? What do you have to do, right? Now that's an important thing, have to do. Things that are optional, they should never be on the list, right? This must, must be done or we're gonna run into problems. Now this list should be things that need to be done over the next year, right? It's not what has to be done this week or next month, right? It's it needs to be done. So this should not include like, hey, we want to try the, the new price extension. It only shows up on mobile devices and it shows up instead of our site links. So we should, we should put that on our to-do list. Yeah, that's on your to-do list of experiments, but it's not something that really, really has to be right front and center in this kind of exercise, right? So question, next question is, how often do you have to do it? Oh yeah, okay, we, we want to do our negative queries every other week. Or hey, we, we still do manual bidding by hand, we need to change bids twice a week. Or hey, we're using CPA bidding and we're happy with it, we need to audit our results every three weeks, right? Big difference there and, and just a different bid system. Then when you do it, Right, okay, well, we need to do this twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We need to do this every month, and the client likes a finalized monthly report, so we should do this the first week of the next month. And, and this is where it's really useful to pull up a calendar when you do this, just to make sure you don't have eight tasks in one day and zero on another one. Right? And then put in your PM system. And if you want to see, we did a whole um, 50 minute video, right, on, on this exact process, which I went through in like four minutes. So there's a lot more on, on things you can do here. That's, that'll get you started. But, you know, put on a calendar, you can visualize what it looks like. Now, experiments are different. This is where corporate structure can determine the success or failure of how your accounts go before you ever start. Right, so this company, if you ignore that dark green box, um, this is the company that their paid search team is about 14 people. They're, they're a decent sized company. And, and they were like, okay, we're not getting into enough experiments these days. There's all this new stuff and we see the shiny objects and we're just not getting it done. How do we do this? So they initially wanted to hire, you know, someone junior, give them a, a lower salary, Prior experiments. And so they hired them, they put them on the person runs workflow. Now, here's the problem with big organizations. You don't do your job. You don't do what you're hired for. You do the job based upon how your boss gets their bonus. Right? That's the job you actually do. So what happened to this person they hired on workflow? They added keywords and negative keywords and created keywords and they never ran an experiment in the first six months. So, okay, that doesn't, that's not where it goes. So let's put this under testing because it's something new and different. 
well, it turns out that all the experiments then turned into landing page experiments because they had a dedicated ad testing person. And when it came to trying new channels or Gmail promotions or something, never got done. It was okay. If we put experiments reports to the online manager and not a sub person, they'll actually get it done. Right. And so it took them like nine months to make a pretty obvious right decision because you don't do your job, right? You do your boss's bonus job. And and that's where, you know, if you're on your own, then hey, Friday afternoons, or even Friday, you know, mornings, great time to try experiments. You know, by Friday, our brain is full. You're thinking about what movie are we going to see this weekend, or when we'll actually get to get home, or will the boss let us out two hours early? Right? So Fridays coming in and saying, you know what, Friday mornings we're going to get the, the really, really you know need to get stuff done first, and then hey, let's use Friday mid morning. Still got some energy left as something new because now you're going to get motivation and creativity from something brand new. Your brain's got to work again. It's great. So if you're a solo person, right, or you're in a smaller team. Fridays, like mid-morning, great time to go think, hey, you know, Google, um, oh, their, uh, their reporting system, oh, what's it, ah, uh, shoot, they just launched one, it's really great, their data warehouse reporting system, and they launched it with five free reports. Today they announced it's unlimited reports, you can make all kinds of crazy, crazy reports and save them, have them auto-updated. That's a good Friday project when you're thinking about how to, how to get more things done. Now, if you're in a team, put in a project management system. Now, next, track time. This is not for billing purposes. Well, I mean, if you're obviously billing, you know, T&M, time materials, then you'll do it for billing, for billing purposes, too. The reason to track time is to find inconsistencies in processes or to realize too much time is spent on a task and you need a tool for it. Right, because if some, if you go to your boss and say, "Hey, we want this new tool. We heard it's really cool, but it's 500 bucks a month," your boss is going to say, "Well, what's your business case?" And you could either say it's going to make us more than 500 dollars a month because that's an easy win then, or right, you could say, "Hey, look, this process takes us 13 hours a month. So 500 bucks, 13 hours. What do you think?" That's a way to win a business case to to a boss of yours. And, and in this time, I was working with an agency and went, why does this process take, you know, Sandy four and a half hours and Kara under two and a half hours? Actually, Michael's doing it in almost two hours. I'm like, that's a really, really huge time difference for, for this particular process, right, by, by analyst. And went, this is for an alpha beta campaign, right, where you've got your, your modified broad match in one campaign, you look at what's doing really, really well from a query standpoint, you add negatives there and you make a managed campaign where you're only using exact match keywords. Turned out that process of queries meeting goals, that process right there was the problem. Because people go, what's a goal? Did we meet our goals? This word has 20 impressions and five conversions, do we add it? But it's 20 impressions which means it may be low volume, so we can't make it a negative. And that little process, that thought process was just, you know, Mike was just saying that looks good, looks good, looks good, right? And, and Sandy was thinking about it a lot. So all they had to say was, you add a query as an exact match keyword if the query has 35 impressions and two conversions for three consecutive months. And then they went, oh, we defined that. Oh, we can write a script for that. Oh, we'll just add these automatically and come back later to see if we need to add the negative keywords. And all this time, gone. It, it now is about 30 minutes while they audit the process for each person to double check everything. But this one from four hours to about 30 minutes because they defined it, which means you can automate it. Now, don't forget to optimize customer support too. Right, it doesn't stop it at the PPC side, right? Support calls and agencies can eat up your time. So a, a lot of people think of support as, you know, fresh desk or Salesforce or something. So at and 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 at Alice's we use Fresh Desk. And I'm like, we're just 
we'd have someone ask us a question and someone else asks the same question. I'm like, why are we answering them twice? Or they would ask us a question, they get a great reply. Six months later, they'd ask the same question. I'm like, there's a better way to do this. So we actually started making videos of how to answer questions. So that way, when someone asks us a question that we had a video for, we could go, here you go. And all of a sudden, that support time dropped to almost nothing because if someone said, how do you do this again? Here you go. Where do I find my reports again? Here you go. Right? So I actually think a go-to meeting, like we're using uh, the GoToWebinar right now, it's a support tool for us. It actually falls under our support budget, not our marketing budget because that's actually where it saves us the most time. So uh, again, we've talked to this if you've been here to a lot of these before, right? Building on automation. It's important to build automation, but only, only, right, if it's a, a repeatable and consistent process. Because you can't automate, it depends, right? It's the most common PPC answer, it depends. Can't automate that, right? So when you really think about it, you say, we, we want automation. Well, what do you need? Well, we don't know, right? Then you say, okay, this takes us too much time. All right, we got that. So, do you always make the same decision? No. Can't automate it. Now, maybe you can do alerts, right? But you can't automate it. Do you always make this? Could you make the same decision? Oh, interesting question. We could if we, if we raised our benchmarks a little bit so that we're not on the low part. Great. So, if you raise your benchmarks, now you can automate it, right? So, let's try that out. And so that's important automation. It's not just you should automate, right? It's really more about is it, report, uh, is it repeatable and consistent and is it really saving that much time? Spending 20 hours making automation tool to save you five minutes uh, a month is not worthwhile, right? S spending you know, 20 hours to make an automation tool that's going to save you 20 hours a week, really worthwhile. So, you know, circle back to tools. When we think about tools, Right, you can sort of look at your uh, how campaign, campaigns work. So you start with you got your keywords, your ads, your landing pages. Right, set of tool one is obviously building accounts. Two, we need to test our data, get metrics. Right, we take that and then we can use negative keywords and negative placements and set bids. A lot of people jump too far in the process. They say, what bid management system do we need? Well, are you tracking conversions yet? Because if not, you can't really set bids yet. Right? So it's really start by determining a process, what to do, how long it takes. Then you look and say, okay, we just need actually, we expand our campaigns all the time. We need builder tools, but Google CPA works great. We don't need bid tools. Or, hey, we're trying to test everything, but it's just too much, so we need an ad testing tool. Now you have something specific to, to go look for to see what fits your actual needs because you actually know what the needs are as opposed to asking that more general question which no one can really answer. All right, so for, to recap here so we can get to some, I'm sure, good questions. Right, step one, start by determining how you work. Right, some people, and I'm actually not a morning person. I get up early. That doesn't mean I'm, a, I'm ready to go in the morning. I just happen to get up early because I have kids. Right, so it's that quiet time in the morning. So determine how you work. If you're an evening person, great, but structure your day around when you've got your own motivation and energy. Right, structure your office, your cubicle, your working environment with minimal distractions. Right, calendars, you're creative people. If you're in paid search, you want big blocks of time. You don't say, I got 15 minutes to a meeting, I'm gonna do some keyword research. No one's ever uttered that statement. Right, so structure your calendar with those large blocks of creative time. Then use project management calendar to know what to do. Once you know what you're doing, then determine your process. Now, once you have a process defined, you can use tools to make those processes flow much faster and be much more accurate with them. With that, I'm going to turn it over to, to Chip to see if we have good questions and, and take a sip of water. I love this stuff. <laughs> this is... Uh life lesson moment for me, my friend. <laughs> I gotta tell you, this, this could not have come at a better time. I don't do PPC, of course, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, but man, I am juggling so many different projects myself uh, right now between personal projects and client projects. And I'm desperate for some organization. 
<laughs> so this is this is good. Yes, we do have some questions uh, in the system. Uh, before we get to it, though, um, I am going to uh, launch a quick uh, screen takeover, what I call my contractually obligated screen takeover. And uh, thank you very much, GoToWebinar, for cutting off my, my little title there. Uh, but uh, the reason for this is uh, to just give you a quick idea about what it is that uh, we do here at MarketMotive slash Simply Learn. Uh, if you're here, you know this is a free webinar. You probably uh, heard about it. Uh, if you're a member, you heard about it through the member notifications. And uh, if you're not a member, you may have heard about it on social. Maybe a friend told you to be here, what have you. And that's fantastic. Uh, we love to have you here. That's why we do this. This is our way of giving back to the community with the insights of our subject matter experts, but it's just important for you to know that webinars is just a little piece of what we do. It's a perk for the community and for our members. We do a bunch of these every month. We do a bunch of them uh, across the two companies. Market Motive, of course, is the sister company of Simply Learn, and we do them around digital media uh, marketing, and we also do them around a lot of other kinds of uh, of professional training and uh, skill sets uh, like uh, project management and uh, so forth. But the core service that we offer is that we're a training publisher. Uh, here at Market Motive, we build web-based digital marketing training curricula that's used by higher education institutions. It's licensed by agencies and professional organizations. Uh, In-house enterprise teams use these trainings as an onboarding tool to get new hires more productive more quickly. Uh, and these are structured courses with streaming videos, downloadable workbooks, quizzes, tests. You get access to forums. You can interact with the faculty, with other students. You can ask questions about the materials. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, you will end up uh, with some refined skill sets or some new skill sets and better able to communicate across silos and uh, up and down the, uh, the management chain and really make a great case for uh, the campaigns that you want to build and the, uh, the, the projects that you want to undertake. If you're interested in knowing more, uh, go ahead and click the appropriate box. We'll have somebody get in touch with you. There's no obligation, and uh, we'll give you a backstage tour and help you pick out the right course and uh, figure out if this is actually the right training for you at all. And maybe it's not, and that's okay. Just keep coming back for these uh, uh, free webinars. So with that said, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, we will be contacting you, of course, by email. If you want to fast track it and you want to drop your phone number into the question module, feel free, and uh, it'll be attached to your data here on GoToWebinar, and we'll have them call you instead of uh, emailing you. All right, that's it. I'm going to close that, and we will get back to the questions. So thanks for your indulgence, and there we go. We're back to seeing your screen, Brad. All right, uh, let's see. We've got uh, Faye is uh, asking, if you use Facebook ads, do you place Facebook ads on a different day and Google ads on another day? In other words, do you feel like uh, it's appropriate or is there a best practice for uh, organizing the kinds of platforms you're pursuing on specific days and times? What a great question. So this is going to be a personal preference, right? I, just want, I want to state that here. I find that Facebook ads, you're, you're talking to people more than search. So I might do Facebook ads the same day I do ads for Google Display Network, especially for like remarketing or something. But I generally would not do Facebook then jump to AdWords. I'd actually want something in between to let my mindset to set, reset that creativity for a different audience type. That's me. If you get creative and you're just going, go for it, right? But that's that's I think that's more of a personal preference of how different your messages are to audience type and if it's kind of like having that you know sorbet in the middle of a meal right cleanse the palate from one before you move on to to the next piece um, that's how I am but I know everyone's not that way so that would be more about how your best workflow really goes perfect uh, Faye I think I think Faye said that yeah that answers her question I hope uh, cleanse the palate yeah exactly uh, she, she resonates with that uh, that way of looking at it. Um, let's see, Vladimir is asking, uh, doesn't reading a bunch of RSS news in the morning kind of put a lot of information in your brain? 
and just kind of load you up? Do you find you need to kind of detox from that before you can start focusing? So actually, for me, no, right? And this is where it's different for everyone probably. Some people maybe do this in, in the afternoon. I, I get up and I'm not a morning person. I, until I've had my second cup of coffee, I, do, I will not speak to a human. Um, it's, it's best for everyone involved. And so to me, reading the news in the morning kind of jump starts my brain, creativity. I'm like, oh, that's something new. Maybe we'll, I'll add that to the to-do list of things. Or, hey, look, there's a new Android update coming out for this, right? And, and so to me, it actually gets me going. But I, some people are the opposite, right? But what I don't do in the morning is read a Facebook feed or whatever else is doing. I'd rather, you know, do stuff myself there. Um, but so again, that's that structure your day based upon how you know you work, or your brain starts moving in the morning. If you're a morning, like my wife can get up and just start working. I do not have that ability. That's an interesting observation. You you wake up and you start looking at Facebook right away. You're really looking at. at how productive other people are being. That always makes me feel bad, actually. <laughs> I get up in the morning and I'm like, oh, look at you, you just published a new book. Oh, look at you, there's a picture of you working. Oh, look at you, what am there's, I doing? I'm on Facebook. <laughs> there are studies that actually talk about the correlation between how much time you spend reading Facebook and depression levels because you're reading and not doing stuff. Um, Oh, I believe so it. So anyway, and, and, yeah. and Facebook for me, uh, I, I feel like uh, I'm, you know, a little uh, ADHD or something, and and I find it so easy to to keep distracting myself. And that metric you had earlier, when you talked about, uh, you know, staying on task for a minute and a half, and then it takes 25 minutes to get back in. Uh, at Market Motive, uh, when when we used to have our developers working right here uh, in the Scotts Valley office, uh, our co-founder John Marshall. Uh, finally had us put a sign on the door for uh, the development team that you know you couldn't go in unless the building was on fire and you know for those kinds of people uh, who and and again you're doing PPC research whatever where your brain is just really needs to be kind of in the zone on a particular task he would liken it to interrupting a chess game he'd say you oh, know yeah. you're in the middle of the game and you're thinking five moves ahead and you're thinking about you know, you've been observing uh, your opponent and how they work, and you're kind of getting a sense of who you're up against, and then somebody interrupts the game. You know, fine, you answer the stupid question about is there popcorn in the kitchen or not. And then you have to look back at the, at the board, and you have to remember where were we in the game. Was it my turn or was it his turn? And what was I thinking about five moves and blah, blah, blah. So his, his, his analogy was interrupting a chess game, and, and I always felt like that was... Uh, uh, really relevant, and I'm glad to hear that it applies to people like me, and not just to people like uh, the PPC team and the development team. Well, and, and I liken it to sports, right? Like, I mean, I'm a big football fan, but you you see teams do completely different in the second half than the first half, right? Who can who can process it, take a break, and then come back out with the new information? focus again, but with it, you know, and that's why you really see first and second half teams where they process information and the changes. Where if a game, like if you're watching a baseball game, is a two-hour rain delay, some teams can't come back from that. They can't get their, their concentration back. Others, they needed it, right? Um, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. By the way, Dan says that Data Studio might be the tool that you were looking for with regard to Google uh, and the free uh, report thing. You are correct, Dan. Thank you. So Data Studio, a really, really cool tool. We showed off here uh, a few weeks ago um, from Google that lets you basically build reports, connect to other systems and stuff, and, and then it auto-updates your information for you. It came out free for five reports. They announced this morning that it is now free for unlimited reports, which is just cool. Um, That's a great tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, by all means, go take a look at it. It's funny. I said data, and you said data. I'm going to get all geeky for a minute here. I saw a thing the other day that's completely unrelated to anything, but I'm going to do it because I'm in charge. Um, <laughs> I just saw this great video where, with Brent Spiner who played Data on, uh, on uh, Star, Trek. Star Trek. And he was talking about how all through the table reads as they were developing the show, everybody called him Data until the very first read with uh, Captain Picard uh, actually present. And he read his very first line and he said Data. 
And from there on, that's the way everybody said the name of the character. And he said the same happened for every weird alien or uh, unusual character name. Whoever on the cast had the first line and got to say that name first, that set the stone for how everybody had to pronounce the name for the rest of the series. All right, now that I've completely wasted everybody's time with that, I can't help it. That's just how I am sometimes with the sci-fi geekery. <laughs> all right, um, 25 minutes to get back on task. All right, here we go. I screwed us all now. All right, we let Facebook and instant messages distract us every few minutes. What do you think about browser plugins that we can use to block access to certain sites if we don't have any self-control? There are things like focal filter, block sites, stay focused. Do you depend on the people on your team to just be self-managing, or do you allow them to have plugins that will help keep them focused? So, our, we hire people who are self-managing in that. Um, so, if they needed a plugin, go for it, right? I mean, I personally don't, but if someone really wanted one, um, sure. I don't really have a, a problem with it if that's what you know is required. But what? So. With I am right here's our our I am rule because I'm I'm a crazy person right it's that if someone I ams you a question and you look at it and you roll your eyes you wait five minutes to answer and after five minutes right you get, it's okay to ping them back assuming you saw it right because often I don't see them right away and if their answer was I already figured it out they know they shouldn't have I ams you you know they shouldn't have I ams you and that they actually learned something by you waiting five minutes. And it's, it's the whole, you know, teach someone to fish, not, not hand them a fish type of thing. So we actually, if it's a, a, a question that, you know, you roll your eyes, if it's a real question, go for it, right? But if it's one you roll your eyes at, we actually just have an internal rule, wait five minutes to answer. The easier you are to get a hold of, the dumber the questions become. <laughs> I love that. I got, okay, uh, yeah. I, I find so often that you're right. People are just uh, asking the question because they don't want to take the minute to figure out how to do the thing or find the thing. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's great. So make them make them go. Minimize your distractions. Yeah, uh, I, it would be nice if there was an IM feature where you could say delay all my IMs by five minutes. Like when people send it, it has to sit in a queue for five minutes before it even displays to me. That, that might yeah, that's better. why I missed the old ICQ because it had all those crazy rules. Although yeah. I really dated myself, you know what ICQ is. <laughs> and, and just you know, and and one note on meetings, right? So I'm a meeting crazy person. However, I don't count brainstorming sessions in that. Sometimes we'll get together and say, okay, what is our next thing? What are we going to build next? That is not really a meeting with an agenda and a purpose and this and that, right? So it's okay to have like those creative, like, we just need to take a big look at this and, and it's not like a super structured thing. Those are, those are different than, you know, a business oriented type of meeting. Yeah, we used to call those whiteboard wars. We're just going to, you know, hey, everybody grab a cup of coffee or a beer, come in here, we're going to have a whiteboard war. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those are my favorite kind of meetings. Uh, but I like the idea of separating those two kinds of things, like knowing going in, you know, okay, this is a meeting. Because a lot of times what happens that frustrates the heck out of me, aside from the no agenda thing and no action steps at the end, which just makes me crazy, is the meeting that turns into a whiteboard war, right? So it's like you're having yeah. a business meeting and then somebody brings up a task or a project or what have you. And instead of saying, all right, well, we're going to tackle that in another meeting, it, suddenly everybody's standing up and drawing and making flow charts and blah, blah, blah. No, everyone's not distracted. Their calendars are off. Yeah. yeah. In fact, if, if we do like a, a webinar or we do like a go-to meeting, we, you know, we're virtual, and, and most of our meetings are virtual. If people are on time, I thank them, right? I'm like, thank you for being on time. Like, it's, it's actually just a habit now. I think it's a good habit because it's just so calm, and you're like, you're five minutes late. Are you showing up, right? Can I end this, or do I have to spend another five minutes waiting for you, right? And it's that whole limbo time that's just, and you're and you're building animosity towards you before you even join the meeting in the first place. Absolutely, absolutely. On, on that note, by the way, we had some people join the webinar late. Would you mind recapping the first twenty minutes so that we can? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Faye says uh, Faye, Faye just is expressing surprise that you don't check. Kim Kardashian posts first thing in the morning. <laughs> I because uh, that's the first thing I do. I gotta be honest with you. I honestly don't think I have logged into Facebook this year. I mean, granted, it's only ah, February. 
right? But I don't know if I've even logged in this year. Now, I do check Twitter once a week, right? And, and I was on, you know, Twitter a little bit earlier today, but I, I, I'm not a Facebook person because it's just, it's distracting. I'd rather get everything done. So, hey, you know, like when the kids come home, we can go relax and get things done and have a, a, a better transition than be like, nope, I got two more things to do because I looked at Facebook for an hour. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I'm impressed by that. And it explains why you haven't liked any of my memes, but... Um, I've never seen them. <laughs> I, sp <laughs> I spend a lot of time on Facebook, and part of it is that I'm just easily distracted, but part of it also is that a lot of the other work that I do has to do with, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm writing and, and publishing, and um, I'm building an audience, and so I have a professional page, and I'm, you know, interacting with people and sharing and, and doing a lot of that kind of stuff. And, and, and so and, I kind of have to be there, and it's it's really hard to stay focused while you're there. No, and that's very important, right? Like, we, I deal with the um, some authors from the Author Association quite a bit. And, and Facebook is their number one lead gen tool. So they're on Facebook sometimes three and four hours a day, but it's it's work. It's not that they're like they're just looking at people's posts and stuff, right? They're engaging because they're building their audience. Totally different, right? Like Facebook is a great you know communication tool and, and a great way to build a community. I'm not dissing Facebook, you know. It's a great business uh, case for it. And and if you want to catch up on everything, great. It's wonderful. But it's it's the people who email you on Facebook and don't understand why they didn't reply. And you're like, I, I don't know, right? Like, you have my email address. Why did you send me something on a platform I don't log into? That's exactly right. It's like, uh, well, I haven't heard from you in ages. Well, I see you on Facebook trolling around all the time. I know you're around. Uh, Teresa says uh, she doesn't have any questions, but just wanted to say thank you for the, all the great ideas and the mental structure for thinking about workflow and tool usage. I'm sure that's – thank you, Teresa. Uh, I'm – sure that's shared sentiment uh, across everybody here. Uh, I personally am going to get off of this uh, meeting and start organizing myself a little better. I promise. I love Trello, by the way. It's what I used to use uh, last year, and I kind of fell out of the habit of doing it, and I'm going to get back there uh, as yeah, well. We're, yeah. we're, we're a big gyro company because yeah. we do a lot of software development, and, and they just bought Trello. So Trello is oh. our business case, and gyro was our software case, and they acquired the Atlantis and acquired them. So. We'll have to see how Trello grows now if they're actually um, acquired for a company with $2 million in revenue is acquired for $425 million, right? So we'll have to see what that business case builds into. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Were they buying users? How many users did Trello have? A ton. Yeah. Because Trello's got a free option. Exactly. Interesting. One last question. Um, we do have shared assets process on Google Drive and some other tools for communication and so forth. Onboarding is our challenge. Sometimes we find that people get here and are here a while, and then we discover they still don't know where to find certain things. So do you have any insight on onboarding to get people up to speed on shared documents and assets and tools and so forth? You live walkthroughs? Yeah, yeah so, so two options, right? One, and I know this word is never used anymore, but um, internal wikis can be really useful for your internal information. The problem with like Slack is that it's all transient based data and it's not, it's not sitting there all the time. So a wiki with internal processes is great, so I'm going to search it. Or just keep a document at the top level, right? Like this is what you need to know to use these docs. You can update it. Anyone can see it and update it. This is where you find all the docs in a spreadsheet. And that way your top level of Google Drive says, Here's how we name stuff. Here's how to read it. And if you need to find a certain folder, this is the information. The other thing that's great to add to that, if you're going to do it in Drive, is a, um, a spreadsheet that lists everyone's name, email address, and what their role is and what, why you should go to them. Right? So like, oh, we need a blog post approved because this client wants to do this Facebook thing all of a sudden, but I know we have a community manager. Who is that? Right, great to, to also have that shared information because the amount of emails we get that are like, who in our company does this? It, and so like personally, I make introductions from one Googler to another Googler almost every week. And I'm like, why don't you know this? Um, <laughs> and, and they've gotten way better at this like internally for them. But like that just top level process, great. Because then it's a, also a defined process, you know what to do. Um, if you're trying to build those out, um, Lucid charts 
really, really useful site, and it'll automatically back up your charts into Google Drive. So you can say, okay, here's our onboarding process. We've actually made a, a workflow for it. We put it in Google Drive, then we can open it up and see here's how a client goes. Um, so that can be another way to kind of visualize some of the, that, that way that, that new clients get onboarded or new individuals get onboarded as well. And then link it to, here's the documents you need. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, have, <coughs> excuse me, having those uh, documents that are kind of pinned to the top, so to speak, um, uh, is a huge thing. Um, my, my experience, uh, I, I've, I've worked on a few film sets um, over the years, and I love working on movie sets. And one of the reasons I love it is because it feels very military in the way that um, communication channels are set up. I mean, like, like, yep. If you're not part of this union, you don't touch that light stand. You know, and if you uh, want to, if you want to move that light stand, you know, you don't move it. You go talk to the person who's in charge of the light stand. If you want to talk to the director, nobody talks directly to the director. You talk to the first assistant director, and there are just these super super clear uh, uh, organizational charts. And some people find it off-putting, but it, wow, man, there is no more efficient place, you know, for physical work uh, than. Uh, than a movie set, and it's because everybody knows that communication flow and that hierarchy, and who you're allowed to talk to, and who do you report to, and what are your tasks, and what are you responsible well, for. Also, because there's like 20 unions involved in making yeah, a movie. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, it's the it's union like, stuff is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but even even on a non-union shoot, and a lot of the ones I've worked on have been non-union. They emulate oh. that, that same kind of hierarchy because it is just oh, so interesting. Wicked, it's just wickedly efficient. And uh, so knowing who to report to and, and what your communication channels are, uh, huge in, in every industry. All right, I have shared some links into the chat module for those of you that are left with us. Thanks for uh, sticking with us all the way to the end here. Um, I've shared some links. One of them is the Market Motive YouTube channel. One of them is a playlist on that YouTube channel that is not publicly facing for some reason. I don't know why, but it's not under a password either. You just need to know where it is, and that's the playlist that has the old webinars. So previous webinars that ha have been produced and uh, posted are there on that, uh, on that playlist. There's a link there to Adalysis, which is Brad's company, and then there are three links out of Brad's uh, uh, presentation for today, the meeting rules, the productive hours blog from Trello, and the the, uh, the calendar uh, recommendations. So take a look at those and uh, get them open in your browser now while you can before we shut down. And that's it. We've gone over time. It's 1035 on my time. Thank you, sir. Great hanging out with you. Yeah, you too. Thank you, Chip, for running everything, as Absolutely. usual. Good. Great chatting with you. Absolutely. I'm super inspired now, so I'm going to go get really, really organized and then look out world, man. I'm, uh, I'm going to take things over. Thank you, everybody else, for being here, taking time out of your day or your evening or what have you to join us. And uh, as usual, we invite you to join us again here next time. Go check out the uh, upcoming webinars. Oh, 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 that's the last thing I'm going to do. Sorry. That's the last thing I'm going to do is give two more links here to uh, the, uh, the courses. For those of you that are interested and want to learn a little more, these are the PPC courses over on both Market Motive and Simply Learn. And I'm clicking send, and nothing's happening, and I don't know why. Well, in any event, if you go to Simply Learn or you go to MarketMotive.com and uh, look for the the pay-per-click paid search courses, you'll find them there. And uh, that's it. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you here next time. And until then, have a terrific, terrific rest of your day. Take care. <laughs>